we separate some students' questions and I'd like to put so that you can answer and uh, connect with our students. So the first question is from Laís Vitória from Itabaiana. And the question is, could you tell us some practical examples of actions that help us to develop our creativity quotients? Yes. So let's take examples from wonder and from rigor. And actually, sometimes it's not so divided. Like, this is for wonder, this is for rigor. You'll actually discover that it helps for both. So one of the things that I do on a daily basis, and it may sound silly, but it actually is quite effective, is, and especially we know about the neuroscience of the brain. We have to give the brain and mind time to rest. So I take daydream breaks. And sometimes it's just 90 seconds long. Sometimes it's two minutes long. And in a warm summer day, I go outside and I look at the clouds or I watch an ant crawl. And then I return to my work after two minutes, maybe five minutes if I have more time. And what's amazing to me is how I come back to my work refreshed and recharged. So daydreaming is super important. Another thing that we can do is that we can become clumsy students of something, of anything. Uh, and make sure it's something that you have a lot of curiosity about that you'll be able to be playful in. Because when we are not good at something, when we are the worst person in the room, we're not the expert, it actually builds up all of those three eyes. So for example, right now I am a clumsy student of social ballroom dance, of salsa. I'm actually learning a samba right now, ballroom samba, uh, foxtrot, East Coast Swing, I'm not very good at it. So I have to ask really good questions. I have to be better at imp being improvisational and being adaptive. I have to listen to my intuition. And what's happening when you are a clumsy student of something, maybe it's cooking, maybe it's um, working on cars, maybe it is um, studying astronomy, I don't know. But whatever it is, you are firing up the neural synapses in your brain so that when you return to your everyday work, those neural synapses are much more mm, exercise ignited. That means that in my consulting work, my advisory work, my strategic work, I am better at asking questions. I'm not embarrassed as much. I'm better at being improvisational and experimental and listening to my intuition. So be a clumsy student of something. And then one third example, I'll share um, for rigor is to do what we call rigor sprints. So if you have to write something, if you're working on a big project, don't make them three hours long. It's a sprint, right? So make it like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, no notifications, total quiet, focus. And then at the end, take a break. Five minutes, 10 minutes, then return to your work. That, those are the three examples I would give.